The major feature of B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia and related disorders as monoclonal B-lymphocytosis and small lymphocytic lymphoma is accumulation of abnormal amount of clonal mature B-lymphocytes. Nowadays, we think that initially monoclonal B-lymphocytosis develops, and then it can progress into chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic lymphoma. B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia is the most common type of leukemia in the Western countries, and we have to know that this disorder affects old people. So chances that a young fellow will have CLL are extremely low, and this disease more commonly affects men. Now, what is the difference between CLL and small lymphocytic lymphoma? In B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia, cells accumulate in the bone marrow and blood, which will cause huge increase in lymphocyte count in the blood. In small lymphocytic lymphoma, cells accumulate in the lymph nodes, which are located in the tissues, so because malignant lymphocytes accumulate in the tissues, the amount of lymphocytes in the blood won't be huge. To explain how CLL develops, we have to recall hematopoiesis. So, to make a mature lymphocyte, stem cell has to undergo differentiation to commonly foid progenitor cell, then to lymphoblast, lymphoblast mature into prolymphocyte, and prolymphocyte will mature into BOT lymphocyte. And as most cells in our body, at some point, B lymphocytes will die by apoptosis. Because what is the point to live for eternity as all the crap attract? So, in normal condition, cells accept their fate. The problem is that in B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia, mutation occurs that disrupts apoptosis of B-lymphocytes. In simple words, this mutation forces cells to live for eternity. This results in progressive accumulation of mature B-lymphocytes in the blood and accumulation of malignant clonal B-lymphocytes in the blood we call B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The major feature of CLL is the presence of more than 5 monoclonal B-lymphocytes in the peripheral blood, and to determine that lymphocytes are monoclonal, we use cytometry. In B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia, lymphocytes in the peripheral blood should be small, which tell us that it's a mature forms of lymphocytes. And in CLL, we use staging system called Ray-Binet. As we can see, the major clinical features of CLL are anemia, thrombocytopenia, lymphadenopathy, significant lymphocytosis, and hepatomegaly. So, to understand CLL, we have to know how all these features develop and why they are important. So, as we know, the major feature of B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia is accumulation of mature malignant B-lymphocytes in the blood. The reason why they accumulate is the mutation that disrupts apoptosis, and this markedly increases their survival. So, because lymphocytes belong to white blood cells, accumulation of mature malignant B lymphocytes will cause increase in total amount of white blood cells and increase in total amount of lymphocytes, and we can see this in complete blood count. So, as we see, accumulation of mature clonal B lymphocytes cause increase in percentage of lymphocytes. And because lymphocytes belong to white blood cells, with increase in lymphocytes, white blood cell count increase. Increase in WBC, with increase in lymphocytes, we call absolute lymphocytosis. And absolute lymphocytosis is a major diagnostic feature of CLL. The reason why we call this absolute lymphocytosis is very simple. Sometimes, WBC can be low, but the percentage of lymphocytes is high, and in this case it will be relative lymphocytosis, which is not associated with CLL. So, in relative lymphocytosis, the total number of lymphocytes won't be huge, it's just the increased percentage of lymphocytes in relation to all other white blood cells. So, absolute lymphocytosis, with the presence of more than 5 lymphocytes in the blood, is a major diagnostic feature of CLL. In addition to this, white blood cell count and lymphocyte count are the criteria for disease progression, because they reflect the tumor mass. 
With time, some amount of malignant B lymphocytes begin to leak into lymphoid organs, where malignant cells begin to accumulate. First of all, it's spleen, and accumulation of malignant B lymphocytes in the spleen will cause splenomegaly. As we see, massive splenomegaly is the criteria for disease progression. Splenomegaly manifests with abdominal discomfort and early satiety that cause loss of appetite. With abdominal discomfort, everything is clear. Obviously, if patient has enlarged spleen, it will compress anatomical structures nearby, and eventually it will cause discomfort. But how to explain loss of appetite? Usually, when we consume some food, this food in comes into the stomach, and inside the stomach, food causes pressure on gastric walls, and exactly this pressure of food on gastric walls gives us a sense of satiety. But in case of splenomegaly, the larger becomes the spleen, the more it compresses the stomach, and the more compressed is the stomach, the smaller becomes the stomach volume. So in these circumstances, the lesser amount of food will be needed to increase intergastric pressure, and thereby to cause the same pressure in gastric walls. So the lesser food is needed to provoke a sense of satiety, and because of this, patients with splenomegaly have loss of appetite, and obviously, decrease in food consumption potentially can cause decrease in body weight. Another serious problem is that at some point, spleen becomes so large that a condition called hypersplenism develops. The concept here is that the larger becomes the spleen, the more active becomes splenic macrophages. And at some point, enlargement of the spleen will cause overstimulation of macrophages. And now, they begin to consume by phagocytosis even normal red blood cells and platelets, which will result in their destruction. So the more severe becomes CLL, the larger becomes the spleen, and thereby, the higher is the chance that splenic macrophages will cause premature destruction of red blood cells and platelets. So, first of all, hypersplenism causes decrease in red blood cells and hemoglobin, which results in anemia. Anemia will manifest with weakness, fatigue, shortness of breath during physical exercises. Also, patient with anemia will have a pale skin and conjunctiva. In addition to this, if anemia progress, new symptoms begin to appear. It's lightheadedness, headaches, severe fatigue, shortness of breath even at rest, and irregular heartbeats. And in addition to this, hypersplenism causes decrease in platelets. Thrombocytopenia causes disruption of primary hemostasis. Disruption of primary hemostasis manifests with increase in bleeding time. Also, it causes bleeding from mucous membranes, primarily from GI tract, but also frequently they have nose bleeding, so-called epistaxis, and microhemorrhages begin to develop, that on skin manifest with patechia purpura hemosis. As we see, decrease in hemoglobin and platelets are also the criteria for CLL progression. In addition to spleen, malignant B lymphocytes begin to leak inside the lymph nodes, and the accumulation inside the lymph nodes, with time, will cause generalized lymphadenopathy. As we see, massive lymph nodes enlargement is the criteria for CLL progression. With time, malignant B lymphocytes begin to infiltrate hematopoietic organs. Infiltration of the bone marrow by malignant cells will cause hypercellular bone marrow, and more than 30% of malignant B lymphocytes inside the bone marrow is the criteria for CLL. Also, malignant B lymphocytes infiltrate liver, and with increasing amount of cells inside the liver tissue, the size of the liver will increase, so hepatomegaly develops. Increase in survival of B lymphocytes significantly increase their age. As a result, most of B lymphocytes become too old to perform their natural functions. Such old malignant lymphocytes cannot produce antibodies. As a result, hypogammaglobulinemia develops, which significantly increases the risk of infections. In addition to this, even if some amount of B lymphocytes are able to produce antibodies, 
In such an old state, they can simply mistake a friend for an enemy. So, B lymphocytes basically becomes demented. And instead of production of antibodies that will target some viral particles, they will produce antibodies against own red blood cells, which will cause autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And there is a possibility that they will produce antibodies that will target own platelets, which will cause immune thrombocytopenic purpura. So, such old B lymphocytes become extremely dangerous. As we see, autoimmune anemia or thrombocytopenia are the criteria for disease progression. And important that autoimmune complications develop in 10 to 20% of patients. And the most common autoimmune complication is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura is 4 to 5 times less common. And recall that to diagnose autoimmune hemolytic anemia, we have to perform Coombs test, which will be positive. And in blood analysis, we can see that hypersplenism or autoimmune complications will cause decrease in red blood cells, which will cause decrease in hemoglobin and decrease in hematocrit. Also platelets decrease, so thrombocytopenia is present. Some lymphocytes can become so old that they won't have the same appearance as other lymphocytes. And such two old lymphocytes we call smudge cells, or Gumprecht shadows. On this blood smear, we can see these smudge cells, and they look quite different to normal lymphocytes. Malignant B lymphocytes produce cytokines, and with such huge amount of malignant B lymphocytes in the blood, cytokines production becomes massive, which cause so-called B symptoms. It's weight loss, fever, chills, and night sweats. And B symptoms are the last criteria for disease progression. Why do we need this disease progression criteria? Because unless the criteria are present, we do not treat patient with CLL, we just observe. And only when disease progress into active phase, we begin to treat. Also we have to know that CLL can be complicated by prolymphocytic transformation, of which is by far more important CLL can transform into a very aggressive tumor, which is called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Basically, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is an analog of acute leukemia, but just in lymphoma's world. So, how this transformation occurs? Sometimes, the second mutation can occur, and this second mutation can disrupt the maturation of lymphocytes. So, it will cause progressive accumulation of less mature lymphocytes. First of all, if this mutation causes moderate disruption of maturation, prolymphocytic transformation can develop, where just prolymphocytes begin to accumulate. But if mutation causes significant disruption of maturation, this will cause accumulation of lymphoblasts, which are very aggressive cells. And typically, even if person has B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia, Lymphoblast will begin to accumulate in the lymph nodes, and lymphoma, which is composed of lymphoblasts, called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Large because lymphoblasts are large cells, and diffuse because lymphoblasts are so aggressive cells that they invade all space nearby without any growth pattern, so they spread diffusely. And this process of B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia transformation into diffuse large B-cell lymphoma we call Richter transformation. If disease becomes active, which means that disease progression criteria are present, we begin to treat. And in treatment, we have two specific drugs. First of all, it's rituximab, which is anti-CD20 antibody, and also it's a brutinib which is Bruton-Starazin kinase inhibitor.